Hi guys, um, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to install the full metal upgrade kit on our Wilt Toys car here. To install this kit, you're gonna need some tools and you're gonna need some, a bit of skill as well. So here we have um, a four mil um, socket. We need um, a small screwdriver, an even smaller screwdriver, and this is a 1.5mm Allen key and you're also going to need some thread lock. Right guys, you get several pieces in the kit. Um, these bits here are the upper swing arms. That's these bits on this part of the car here. Right, we've also got the front steering yokes. So front steering yokes are these bits on here of the car. There's two of those. We get the shock towers and we get four um, bottom steering yokes. So that's these pieces here, one, two, three and four. And we also get the rear uh, steering hubs, but I've already got those on the car because if you remember from a previous video, they were the first bits that I broke. And we also get a big bag of screws. Now all these parts are really small, it's really fiddly, and some of the parts you need to adjust ever so slightly, um, and it could be different depending on the different variations of the car you might have. Um, so I would say this is a hobby grade kit. If you want something that's straight away plug and play, maybe this kit isn't for you. You do have to have some model skills or some um, some technical sort of know-how to make this kit work. Right guys, as I said, the parts on this car are so small that I've got myself a little pot and I'm going to start disassembling it now. Everything I take off is going in this pot. So here we go with some spanner work. Right, let's start getting the shock towers off. Taking the shock towers off first just makes it loads easier to be able to get at everything. Three screws hold this on. suspension off there we go here's a shock tower off two bits of suspension take suspensions off put it in there there's our shock tower do the rear shock that was the front one let's have a go at the rear one three screws again Screw it. There we go. Right. Just bend them over to take them off. It's quite easy. Right. There we go. Take suspension off there. I'm going to leave these like standy up tower bits in for now. So when it comes to put it back in again, I don't have to uh, memorize too far how these are up on there. Do you know what I mean? Right. So let's take the rear off as well. So now I'm going to start taking off these suspension bits here. Again, I'm still using the bigger of the two small screwdrivers. Okay, we can lift those out. 
that one out. Let's take the bottom yolks off. Once they're off, it's a lot easier just to pop these bits out just by doing that. And that one. Right, we're going to leave these bits on because they're not part of this kit, so they're staying for now. Right, that's the rear done. Let's do the front. So again, we're going to take the top off. Just need easing out with your finger as you unscrew. There we go. See, because it's only the threads only up that part, not down, not down that part. So I need a bit of help to come out. So we're going to pop these off. Let's do the lower ones. The screws just the bottom here. So now we're undoing the lower yolks. We're going to save all these screws because you might as well use the ones that are already on the car because you know they're perfect size. There we go, that one's out, so this will just pop off like that, and again, get it off this steering arm is a twist. I love these little, are they called half shafts? I just love these little bits, it's so small, it's proper cool. Just twist it to get it off. All right, it's come off now. There we go, all right, so there we are four steering wheel assembly, steering assemblies all off the car and we're now ready to fit the kit right guys now we're going to build um, the front suspension mount so this is the bottom yoke piece here we have the steering cup here and this is um, the top swing arm part here now sometimes these these pieces come a little bit too long there's two types of uh, adjusting rod in the middle here so this type here we have the smaller adjusting rod this one fits okay but there are a lot of kits out there including the ones we have sometimes where this is wider which makes this rod just a tiny bit too makes this rod just a tiny bit too um, long so in order to fix that there are two options you can do um, with this rod here um, you can actually make that up out of the screws so you get an m1 screw so this is um, there's an m1 screw in here there we go so you can take one of these m1 screws here and we can just cut it um, cut it with some uh, side cutters um, and then you can insert that up the rod and cut it to exactly the right length you want, which completely solves all your problems. Um, the second option, if you don't want to do that, is to take a file. Here we go. And you can file this down. It's aluminium, so it files down really, really easily. Okay, so you've got, you only need to take like a millimeter off. It's absolutely nothing. So you can see we've got the two options here. 
So always use Loctite with everything. Otherwise, if you don't lose Loctite to get the uh, screws in tight enough so they don't wobble, um, you're going to end up over tightening it and you'll strip the threads on these aluminium pieces. Okay, so Loctite and everything, please, and it stops it coming undone. So put a little bit of Loctite on there. You only need a dab. Screw that in place. Now I know that it needs to be screwed down all the way. So even though it's adjustable, I already know where I want it to be. Not coming out. Put a piece of Loctite on here. Right. Screw this one down here. Yes, Lily Pops, I'm doing a video. There we go. And when you screw it down, you want to make sure that the two holes, that side there and that one, are perpendicular to each other, so otherwise it won't fit. It's a little bit of uh, tissue to scrape off the excess. So that's one of the swing arms done. Now this um, is the uh, steering cup. Now there's several things on the internet saying that if you want to use the plastic pieces, um, which you can do for these bits and the bottom yoke, that these are too big. So there's one method we had which was filing that down to make a groove. Once that groove's in there, you can then swing it round the bottom yoke, if this was a plastic one, you can swing it round and bore it out and make it fit. Or another option is to take this, that's already in there tight, is to take these off. You can put it in the end of a drill or a Dremel and spin it round and you can file it down just a little bit with a file as that's spinning. Do you know what? Both those methods I don't think are necessary at all. Um, I think it's a bit daft. Once you've got the piece installed, it's um, after time, it's going to bed itself in and make itself fit perfectly. Just give it a little bit of time and it'll be okay. Right, so if you want to use a plastic bottom yoke, you need these pieces still in. If you do not wish to use the plastic bottom yoke, it's up to you if you use it or not. Some people like it, some people don't. You have to take these off. So I'm going to show you installing it with a metal bottom yoke. So we're going to screw, under screw these pieces. We're going to put it in our smart parts bin. So this piece here is a suspension mount. We need that pointing forwards. This arm then fits backwards on top of it like that. So we need these shorter M1 screws to screw up through the bottom and into there. So let's do that now. So that is going to end up on there like that. So again, we'll pop the screw up through the hole. Now we need a tiny bit of thread lock. As I say, if you don't use thread lock, you have a danger of over tightening things and then stripping the thread. We don't want that to happen. But also, if you use too much thread lock on there, you can affect the UV joint and stick it together. If that does happen, it's no big deal. Uh, you can spin that round to make that fit, just to start it off. Right, it's in place. Yeah, if it does get stuck, you can just wobble it about until it comes loose. Screw it, tighten it up. There we go. There we go, that's nice and loose there. The uh, steering arm bit is facing backwards. The bottom yoke's there. This is where the suspension goes on. That's facing forwards. We've got our pre-determined, pre-adjusted um, top swing arm. So we're going to put the nut through there, the bolt through there. I mean, push it in. Again, a tiny piece of thread lock. So that it'll tighten up and stick without over tightening and stripping the thread. Too much thread lock and you're at risk of gumming it up. So we have to be, oh look at that. What a mess, dear me. Let's just clean that up. Oh well, we all have little accidents now and again. All right, small piece of thread lock.
All right, there you go. I'm actually going to dip that in there. So I've got enough on the end. Pop that in the end. I'll just turn it around to get it started. Fiddly. Let's try it the other way. There we go. We're in. So there we go, there's our bottom suspension piece assembled. Right, now we're going to stick this front st uh, steering unit um, onto the car. Um, so we put our um, ball bearings in that side. There you go, that's just gone in. Put the bearing in this side. There you go, that's clipped in. Do you know what? If you find that's not a tight enough fit, you can always put a little bit of a little tiny dab of thread lock on there to hold them in place, um, which quite often I do. Right, but to be honest with you, when you screw the wheel on, that will hold it in place as well. This is the half shaft, it's a nice little metal piece here, the UV joint on the top. Just pop that through the hole so that the, the threaded end is sticking out. Like that. So that is our front steering unit assembled. So this piece, the bottom yoke, then fits on this bracket here with the UV joint sliding in to our front differential there okay so you can actually do it all in one go if you're clever it is a fiddly job right there we go so that's that in place right you then take the long screw from the original original car and just push it through it doesn't actually bind on with the screws however it's a good enough fit that I've never had it slide off. It's quite a good push-in job. You can give it a little bit of a screw to get it in. I've never known that would come out, so that's fine. Right, so now that is the short piece. There you go, the top arm goes in there. This is from the original car again. Now this is a plastic unit at the front, so it will actually screw in. Because it's screwing into plastic, there's no need for thread lock. Just a case of getting it through, exactly through the hole. There we go, in it goes. Let's screw that up. And there we are. That is the front steering unit assembled. Nice movement on there. There's no dodgy camber because this is the right length. If it wasn't the right length, we would have cut it down and filed it to make it fit. And okay, now I'm gonna go and store the other side. Right, now we've got both of the steering units set up properly. It's now a case of setting up the servo arms that join it all together, or link rods or whatever you want to call them. So this one from the actual top of the arm goes to the top of this, um, left hand steering yoke a bit fiddly again it's all fiddly this because it's quite small there you go insert that pop it on voila now underneath turn it up the other way now see how it's a slightly wider hole this side than that side the wider hole is what goes over the ends. Don't forget that we've actually, when we've put these in here, we've put them in with a bit of uh, Loctite. Push that in. Push that in. Clip it in place. That one's been a little bit stiff. 
There we go. Lovely jubbly. All in place and working oh, just fine. Look at that. Lovely. Right now we've got both of the steering units set up properly. It's now a case of setting up the servo arms that join it all together or link rods or whatever you want to call them. So this one from the actual top of the arm goes to the top of this um, left hand steering yoke. A bit fiddly again, it's all fiddly this because it's quite small. There you go, insert that, pop it on, voila. Now underneath, turn it up the other way. Don't forget that we've actually, when we've put these in here, we've put them in with a bit of uh, Loctite. Push that in, push that in, clip it in place. That one's been a little bit stiff. There we go. Lovely jubbly. All in place and working oh, just fine. Look at that. Lovely. Right, now we're going to start installing the rear suspension assembly on the car. It's exactly the same as the front one, um, but a little bit easier because there's um, less components. Right, so that's going to go on there like that. That's your rear yoke. Um, no, it's not. Right, now we're going to install the rear um, suspension assembly. So your rear yoke goes in place like that. Now this is what your suspension attaches to, so that will go on like that. Um, there is your steering yoke which goes on there. So if you're using this as a plastic unit, you keep these bits on. I'm using the metal ones, so I'm going to take them off now. There we go. Right, so that is going to screw on there like that with the arm facing forwards. Right, so let's get our M1 screw, the shortest one. It goes through the bottom of this knuckle joint thing, whatever you want to call it. Pushes in there. Then I have, again, thread lock. Let's hope I don't spill it everywhere. I only want a tiny bit. Oh, it's dribbling everywhere. I'm not very good with this, am I? And I've sort of got it where I don't want it. Well, I'm off there. Do you know what? It's cheap. That's a much better way of doing it, isn't it? We'll do that in the future. Alright, so that is going to screw into there. Voila. We have a nice movement on that. Let's get the top army. Where's my top arm? Yeah, it's in the packet still. Right, let's get the top arm on. Again, we're going to do the thread lock. Oh, why didn't I think of this at the beginning? That is so much better. It's a tip for you guys. Put a splodge of thread lock on your desk first and then you won't get any grief with it. So that piece now screws onto the top like that with one of these little bolts. Look through there. Quick tighten up. Let's get my thread lock. I'll tell you what, 
We're flying with this red dot now, aren't we? Absolutely flying. Let's get that screw into there. Oops. in the hole, don't want it on top of the hole. There you go. See this is really hard. All I want to say is be gentle. It's easy to strip the threads if you're a bit cack handed. Right, there we go. That is that unit properly installed and it all moves nice and freely. Right, now we're going to assemble this unit onto the vehicle. So again, we have wheel bearing at the front, uh, uh, wheel bearing in this side. Pop in our drive shaft through there. It's falling out again. When the wheels go on, these don't fall out anymore. It all holds it in place. Right. Now, like before, drop that in there. Drop that knuckle in. Oh, fumble fisties. Humble fisties. There we go. We're in. Oh dear. Fiddling in my box. I'll get the long one. That goes through there. Again, there's nothing to hold that screw in. It just doesn't fall out. Okay. The short one goes through there. So the metal piece we're going through that bit and we get the short shorter one which is out of my box here should have got all this sorted out shouldn't I right short one goes through there this one does bind in because it's going into the plastic unit there we go perfect now this arm here just clips onto there we do actually sell these as well they don't come in the standard, but you can get these ones. If you break, if you don't break it, leave it. If it breaks, we well, can help. Oh, that's a bit stiff. There we go. Look at that, nicely moving up and down. Perfect. Now just do the other side. Right now that all the suspensions are all set up properly, it's time to install the shock towers. So this is the rear shock tower, um, and this is the front one. So it's a case of just noting the position that it was originally. So there's just a little bit sticking down and basically all the way up. So it's unscrew them and screw them into there. So you need your smallest screwdriver. Here we go, that's a tiny bit there, isn't it? This faces forwards the same direction as these uh, holding bits on there. Put that in there like that. Holes are lined up. Screw it back in place. That's it, same with this one. Yeah. 
that's the rear shock tower constructed. Now we'll do that one. Then. No child friendly video, I didn't say a rude word. And go. Pull that out. Doesn't matter which way that goes around, it's universal. Sure those holes line up. They're constructed, it's now time to get them on a car. Hi guys, well this is the metal upgrade kit fully installed on the car. Now what you'd know is that these screws, they stick out just a little bit. See they hang down, that's lower than what happens if you have the standard plastic bottom yokes on the car. So that's really going to affect wheel choice for this car. Your standard wheels they'll be fine, there's quite a big clearance on those. If you have these kind of wheels, see the diameter's a little bit different, so that slams the car to the deck. It looks totally cool, and I do find it handles really, really well. However, with this setup, those wheels I don't think will be appropriate for this car. But check out these bad boys. Look at that, they are a much bigger diameter wheel and I think they're going to complement this kit absolutely perfectly. So, let's go with them. Right, so we're going to stick these big oversized wheels on this vehicle now. Um, the, the nuts, if you got to this stage, you've taken off anyway, so you know. But in case you don't, it's a 4mm socket to get that off. Now, I've got one trick of this. I always put two nuts on. See, if you put that up there, it sinks too far down inside the hole, so it's difficult to actually get your nut on properly. So if I just stick two in, that one leaves out of the top, and it should go straight on. You only have to fiddle a bit when you get to the last nut. Get in, look at that, the nut's on. Epic, look at that. Epic. There we go. Metal upgrade kit. Fully installed. Right guys, this is the body mounted on the new oversized wheels and I would say that I would recommend trimming those wheel arches a little bit bigger to make sure that they don't foul, but those wheels are epic. Look at that. So yeah, slight body modification to make them fit. Perfect. <laughs> 